Hello everyone and welcome to my very first look of Train Sim World 4. I've hardly seen any of the previews and live stream stuff that I've done. I've hardly seen any of them, so it quite literally is a first look. But we, yes, we're, we're here. We're on the main menu, just about to go in. Uh, I think the only route I have installed at the moment is the East Coast Main Line, so that's the one we're going to be doing first with the Flying Scotsman. Uh, big thanks to Dovetail Games for giving me a key to show it off. Obviously, all opinions are of my own, and I'm sure we'll go into those sorts of things once we get going. Um, but yes, here we are, Train to Sim World 4. Um, let's get started. Let, let's go. Okay, so similar similar menu to Train to Sim World 3. I don't think really much has changed for, with the menu. Uh, I think you can hear the music as well. I'm pretty certain it's not copyrighted, so we should be all right. It's uh, done by Dovetail. Uh, Dovetail Games Benjamin actually. Right, choose a route. So, it's the only one I have installed at the moment. So East Coast Main Line. Let's get in uh, the Azuma. Uh, let's go in the Dash 1. Um, and we want to do a full run from Peterborough to Doncaster. There we go. I think I was going to do that one. We'll set it to Summer because then routes generally look the best. Uh, and we will put Dynamic Weather on. We'll see what happens. But in we go. It is time. Time to... Time to do it. Time to drive the Azuma. Uh, which I'm looking forward to. But in we go. Fingers crossed. We're on the Xbox Series X for this. There we go. 1 Delta Zero to London Kings Cross to Leeds. But obviously only going as far as Pete. Well, going as far as Don Donny, Doncaster. Five coaches as well. Right. Oh, it's just. Oh, a new TSW. It's just. Wow. Are, are we ready? I'm going to turn up the audio on the capture card as well. Um, as it's an electric train, so it shouldn't make too much noise. Uh, let's get in. I'm wearing the TSW4 top as well. Just probably just about to see it. Right. Oh, let's go. Okay, so this is Peterborough, I believe, we're at the moment. Here we are. Look at that. Peterborough. Well, home to the ARU Peterborough, your employment-focused university. Lovely. Um, let, oh, my controller's vibrating, which I know is like a new thing. On the Xbox uh, and then on PlayStation. I think it's going to work the best on PlayStation as you've got haptics on there. It seems to be every time I'm moving a controller, it's it's doing um, doing a vibration type thing. Um, let's set that to dimmed. I'm so I'm not doing the tutorial as it's a UK train, so they're quite straightforward to set up. Uh, door release. There we go. Okay. Um, let's come back and get the safety systems on ETCS which you won't actually use we, we won't be using that but I'll turn it on anyway because um, yeah, that's the European train control system uh, which is currently not active on the east coast main line, at least it's not on this bit and it's not on it's not on the east coast main line south either yet but I suppose they've got it just you know for future TPWS, Vigilance, uh, DSD, it really does like to vibrate the controller. Uh, and what's that? Uh, SDO as well. I hmm, wonder if that works. Oh, let's get in. Sorry, train. It's alright, okay. Got it? Happy? Oh, and you can hear it say it's operational as well, that's cool. I was, I was, I was, I was expecting to see the ring going around the locked doors, but it's now the bar. I don't know if I like the bar, it's quite... I don't know. It's the bar. But it's all good. Um, GSMR. Oh, there we go. It's uh, doing its thing. Registering the lead driver. 1 Delta zero two. Would have been nice to see a little bit more functionality on that. Um, as I think that's basically the same as what it was on the Cross City. And Glossip. But anyhow. Let's get the door shut. Uh, door close. There we go. Right, are we ready to go? I think we are ready to go. Uh, let's set that to forward. Here we go, the beginning of the... Where are we stopping? Where are we, where are we calling at? Grantham and then Doncaster. Okay, well, here we go. It really it likes vibrating the controller. We're off. I was like, for a second, I was like, uh, well, we're not going. Here we go. It's a pretty nice horn as well. And you've got the inclusion of all markers as well. Which are the um, 700 stop markers. So you can actually see uh, 700 AI on here. Albeit the RLUs. 
out we go. So this is the first of four routes we're going to be doing. Or at least first of five first look videos. Because there's four routes when there's like two extra. Well actually the Navica Dresden one we'll probably just do in the Vectron anyway. But we, well, yes. What do you get with Train Samoa 4? Well for the standard edition you get the East Coast Main Line. Which is Peterborough to Doncaster. Uh, with the Azuma. Uh, and also the 66. I think that's included. Um, you get the Vralberg, which is some Austrian route, and the Antelope Valley Line. Let's get that up. Which the Antelope Valley Line is in LA, or sort of within, outside, near LA. Well, no, it is LA. It's LA Union Station. So you'll be getting that as well. That's 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 the standard edition, three routes. And then the deluxe edition, you then get Navica Dresden put on top of that, uh, with the Vectron. Um, and also the Flying Scotsman for the East Coast Main Line. So we, we might see the Flying Scotsman on this trip. We, we may do. Next stop, Doncaster. It did say Grantham, so I don't know why it's changed to Doncaster. But off we go, though. It's a bit of horn as well. And the side um, PIS screens do work. Yeah, they they do work. I've I've seen them working. Maybe on this service they're not on or something, but I have seen them working. Maybe we can actually set it on here. Can we do anything? I mean, it's quite cool the way you can see the uh, all the bits of information here on the TMS. I suppose this would be. I don't know. Can what can we use? Dark screen. Let's try and use that. I mean, that is yeah. That is a very dark screen. That just seems to turn it off. Door selection. What can we do with this? 29 degrees outside. Oh, that's cool. Ooh, I like that. I'll have a little tinkle with that in a second. This is really quick. And you may also notice we have got the new HUD up as well. Uh, almost like the Train Sim Classic HUD. Well, not really, but you've got the track sort of diagram up there. Um... Yeah, the track diagram. Oh, I thought that was yellow for a second. The track diagram. So it's telling us in the next, well, two kilometres, 1.25 miles, uh, it's telling us signals uh, and speed limits. So you don't have to use the game HUD now, the HUD, or the HUD speedo. You can actually just use this massive one right in front of us. And I also wonder if we get cruise control on this, because I think in real life, these have cruise control. Oh, double yellow. We shall start slowing down. Right, I'm going to turn that off. I'm not a big fan of the vibration on the Xbox. It just seems to be going off as as willy nilly. Controls. I don't know if we can control settings. Track rumble. Maybe it's supposed to be that. Control hover. Maybe. Well, I'm going to get both of them down because it's going off quite a, quite a little bit, and that one as well. I'm not the biggest fan of that. I think it'll probably work better on the. Um, on the PlayStation, you've got the haptic feedback. That would be cool. We will be checking out on the PlayStation as and when. Nice right, so for bringing that down. Something's holding us up. Is that a double yellow? Oh, that's on the signal. Is it the signal? No, it is a signal. That's no, green. Okay, so whatever it is is now out of the way. Right. I want to have a little play with this auto announce. Oh, I can't do eco driving. No thanks. Oh, you can click. Oh, you can click them all. Okay, as that's telling us all of that stuff. It's quite cool. There's a bit of functionality with this auto announce. So I'm interested in that. Wait for it to load. If it has to load up, is it going to load up? Not sure. <laughs> it might do. What have we got coming up here? Signal box here. Eh? Nice. Can we get inside the signal box? So is it a signal box? It is. Let's have a look. Ah, it's not modelled inside. So we've got how long to Grantham? I think that bar. You see that bar up there? I think it. I think that's telling us how far it is. The bar should start coming down when we're close to it. I hope. I hope it does, because otherwise we're going to fly right through it, which wouldn't be any good. Let's go ahead if we can. Actually, I don't think we're going to be able to. The train's going too quick. 
There it goes. Little little five coach. So there's the eight oh one slash one. That one's really good from the inside, and there's also the eight oh two no eight oh one slash one and eight oh one slash two. One of them slightly longer, I think. Nine coaches long. Oh, there's a neutral section. I saw a neutral section warning on the other bit, so let's put that back to off. Although, would it work? Oh, there's a flashing green as well. That's cool. I didn't realise they were actually... Um, actually, no, I did, I did say they were in. I know, a little blurb. I didn't think they were actually working. That's really weird to see. I mean, that is really just weird but unique. Uh, it's because on this route, when they were upgrading it, I think they were trying to upgrade it for 140 mile an hour running. So the conventional UK signalling system or signal aspects, it's green and then double yellow, single yellow and then red. Uh, because they were sort of trying to make it faster, they added another aspect which was flashing green. Uh, I didn't actually realise it was, you know, working on this route. I thought, you know, you might be able to sort of see it, I suppose. Well, not see it, but I don't think it would actually be proper, you know, working, I suppose. It's still rumbling, my controller. I'm going to turn that. Hopefully you can't hear that That noise. That's not a nice sound. Of the uh, my thingy going a bit funny. Uh, right. That's, it's that, that's the one. It's that. Alright, get rid of that. There we go. I'm going to quickly try and move that up a bit. Put it there. Hopefully hopefully it's working alright. Hopefully. I need to... It's the audio bloody wire. I don't know if you can hear those crackling sounds. Hopefully you can't. So not particularly pleasant. That's not the game. That's just my um, controller and my Elgato wire being funny. So I suppose this is basically what the journey is like. The whole it's eighty miles long. This from uh, Peterborough to um, Doncaster. It's just like this, I suppose. Flat fields. Yeah, it's a very sort of flat part of the country. And we also get to see the Newark uh, Flatgate crossing. Which was sort of one of the things they were really sort of hyping up about. Um, you know, there's a, it's got a flat gate, uh, a flat crossing on it. Which is cool, but not that exciting. Look at that. It's quite cool. So it's weird seeing that, the uh, flashing green. And you also might be able to notice the wires look slightly, the OHLE looks a bit better than what it did in previous iterations. It renders in much sort of sooner now. I mean, on Train Sim R3 even, you could see the poles loading in as you went along. Now, well, okay, really far, on the, a, a bit further, they, they've got a much uh, further render distance now, which is good. So quite irritating before when you would sort of see them loading in as you were going along. The FPS is a little bit all over the place, which is quite weird for a route like this where there's not really much going on. I would sort of what I, well, I would think that would probably be 60 FPS solid, which it is, ish, but it is coming down every now and again. But yeah, you can see all the wires quite nicely. Which, if I can remember from my PTS training, they did me quite. It did me funny. They did. I did uh, for my PTS training, so I work on the real world railway. Um, yeah, for my PTS training, we did both DC direct current and AC alternating current, which is the the wires. And um, when I actually got my license, because I passed the test well, and even the AC bit, I think I was the only one to actually pass the AC bit. Because where I am, it's just all DC. Um, they just put DC, and I was like, oh, I did AC as well. I passed AC. And my little license, my little orange card. Right, so hopefully we'll see that bar coming down. Because if not, we're going straight through the station, which actually isn't the end of the world. Because in Trainsim World 4, if you pass a station, it will just jump to the next station. Like you don't, you literally don't need to worry about missing a station now because on previous iterations of the game, if you missed a station, that was it. You basically just get out, quit, and go. You have to do it again. 
because the the objective would still say stop at the station, and if you can't go back for a red, so it just didn't didn't work. But yeah, going back to the wires, yeah, you can see the wires are pretty well done. They're not sort of and they're quite a way you can see them as well. I mean, they're further than what you could. You can see the catenary wire, which I believe is the top one. The contact wire, which is the one. As yeah, you can see there's two levels of wires. The top one's the catenary wire. The one below it's the contact wire, and then the sort of vertical one that's known as the dropper. Although I can't see any alongside track. Well, oh, no, hang on, can I? No, I can. Yeah, you can see it. The uh, alongside track conductor, which is the one which sort of just hangs on the side. So it's quite good. Yeah, it's certainly good. Right, how far we're we going? Only 90 miles an hour. Let's speed up a bit. It's 125 miles an hour, but we're just not going 125. It's all good. It's it's the first look. Uh, what we got? A van. Does, does this work? Okay, that one doesn't work. Brack, uh, that that one does work. You you would hope it you would hope it would. Panto selection. Cool. Dual mode. Hope that doesn't break anything. Saloon status. Nothing. Journey, is that going to work? Oh, hang on, I'll click it. Maybe it will come up in a sec. Right, maybe we shouldn't be mucking about of that. Probably end up breaking something. But, you know, there's a nice amount of... Um, nice amount you can do there with the... Um, with the TMS display. Sort of, uh, well, I suppose... Probably a little bit above the usual. For um, functionality. So that's good. Oh yeah, the GSMR though. Would have been nice to see a little bit more. I don't know if that's saying one, 1 Delta 2 7, but we're 1 Delta 0 2. Okay, I think something's a little bit up with the PIS and the system there. But, yeah, that should be alright. Should be sorted. Cool. And none of these work. Which is a little bit, I mean, it's not a shame. As I, I wouldn't have really expected them to work anyway. But maybe something a little bit more on this side. Because I, I think these would be the CCTV displays. Um, that would have been nice. Maybe e even a bit like on the Bakerloo line on Train Sim World 2. Where you saw the screens on, but they weren't actually of the game. It was sort of just... I suppose the the same sort of still image. Even if it was that, it still it still adds to it. Oh, there's the ETCS. So I wonder if you could use this on there, uh, losing Cersei, and I wonder if the ETCS would work on there. That'd be a good experiment to do. Got the signal bell as well. Don't know if it makes actually any noise, but. Maybe it's only I don't know. You can't. I can't hear any noise when I click it. Hmm. Well, no sort of ding ding. TPWS. It's sort of sort of what is usual functionality. So that's that's good. It's still vibrating. I don't know if you can hear the vibrations. But it's still doing its vibrating. Uh, vibration. Got the brake release as well. Does that come up when you click it? It does. Nice. Okay, so that sort of yeah, it works. But once we get to uh, Grantham, we'll have a sort of a proper thorough look at what we can use in the cab. Right, oh, well, we've got like a... Oh, it's gone orange. Does that mean we need to start slowing down? I think so. So down to 115. We can't be too far from Grantham now. I hope that bar does start doing something. I'm pretty certain that's what I've heard them or seen in the Discord them say that that starts coming down. When you're getting close to... Ooh, I can actually see the end of the tunnel. That's nice. In we go. And it's dark. It's actually dark. Because on a lot of trains in World Trains, when you go into a tunnel, it, you just, it's still quite light. I mean, that's pitch black. Our adaptation as well. I know it was a train some more free feature, but nice to see uh, still in. 
Right, so we can't be too far off now. We're due there at 43. We'll probably be late. So we're saying maybe 45 we'll get there. So we must sort of be on the approach now. Is it a big place, Grantham? Now, I've got to keep remember we're going north as well. So I don't know. I'm, I'm, in, I'm in the southern mines. I feel like we're going south, but we're not. We're going north. And dynamic weather is on as well. I thought as it's a high speed service, um, the weather probably would. And we're going, yeah, you know, covering 80 miles. I'll, I'll turn it on. Right, okay. It's still 115. I'm sort of staying at about 90 at the moment. Just in case the station just does appear and the bar doesn't go down. I should trust the bar. Maybe there's where you can turn on, so it tells you how far away it is. That would be, that would be nice. This is cool, though. I mean, what does everyone think so far? I mean, we've been going about 20 minutes already. Um, yeah, what, what does everyone think? East Coast Mainline. Yes. 80 miles between um, Doncaster and Peterborough. 80 odd miles. It's a quite a long route. Um, it's not the longest UK. I think the longest UK route is southeastern high speed, which I think is about 90 miles in total. Uh, but it, I mean, it's fairly long for like a whole just one stretch, 80 miles. Also, what does everyone think of the new HUD as well? Or the sort of updated HUD? Not a fan of that bar. As when you're at stations, I do quite like the ring going round. Um, yeah, I'm not a fan of that bar. I, th I think the ring will be slightly better to sort of look at, and you can say, "Oh, we're going to not too long," but the bar, don't know. Right, this looks. Hang on, it's not a station coming up now. That is a station. Are the bar? How quick is that coming? Okay, we're all good, but I mean that's really coming. I don't trust that bar. <laughs> I don't trust it. I mean, you literally have to go in about. Full, you have to go full brakes to actually be all right. And we're coming at fifty. It's a long platform, so we're all right. Yeah, I don't trust that bar. We're probably going to miss the stop marker. Yeah, there's a stop marker there for five. Don't trust that bar. Don't trust it. I thought it was going to come down much sooner. It was sort of basically coming around the corner, and it was a psh, town it went. Well, here we are at Grantham. Slightly dramatic stop. Uh, let's get the doors open. I don't like that bar. Can we get rid of it? Uh, settings, hard. It's got to be on here somewhere, isn't it? Track monitor, track monitor, is it that? Track monitor. Got that. Oh, we should have a, uh, the suspension as well, shouldn't we? I haven't felt that much. Uh, measurement units. I like having them on feet. Um, maybe we can't change it. Player assist. Uh, no, hard. We just on there, aren't we? Where would that be? Accessibility. Felt movement rather parts of walk. Crosshair visibility. Auto crosshair should have that on. Yeah, that's fine. Can we not turn that? Oh, I don't like. I don't like it. I don't like that bar. It's done us dirty there. Uh, don't know. I don't know if there is actually a way you can turn that off. But I mean, that that was too sudden. And literally, we we're coming round that corner, and it just got us going psh, when we're at ninety odd miles an hour. But we got here on time, though. Right, let's have a little look. Let's put the DRA on. Should that be going off? Because we're in neutral. Mm, go for max break. Hmm. I don't know. About, should that be going off? Because we are. We've got. We're in neutral. And we got the DRA on. Or at least we're in neutral. So I'm gonna. That's the the vigilance. Where's that on there? Uh, vigilance. We could get that off. Um, 
Right, yeah, let's see what we can... Ooh, hello, that's nice. What we got? All the shiny buttons we can uh, can uh, use. I don't think we can use any in here. It's still nice that we can open it. And we've got all the fuses. It seems you can use... Okay, not every one. But most. Panscraft selection, TBWS. Uh, okay, that's to do with doing the hatch, the unit hatch close. I don't know, it's still vibrating. I don't like that vibration on the Xbox. It, it probably it will be better on PlayStation because then you've actually got the um uh, yeah, just get that just get that all off. Not really a fan of that. I think that will probably that you'll get the best experience out of that on PlayStation with the haptics. Get all the signals and stuff you can use control panel active switch. Oh, there's another one. Uh, let's go in the passenger area in the saloon. So we got. So yeah, you've got this. These do actually work. I've seen them working before. Um, maybe it's just one of those services where it's like nah, not doing it. Uh, you got the uh, egress there. Would be nice to have seen posters or maybe get the community to uh, to design posters to put in there. So much it's just a blank canvas, which just looks a bit boring. It's quite nice in here. You've got the uh, green uh, PIS. Oh, you can sit in the seats as well. We're not going to do that, but you can. So the interior is, is quite nice. Oh, there we go. That one's working. There we go. Looking at Doncaster. Wakefield Westgate. Oh, that one's working. I don't know why that one wasn't back there. Oh, it is. It is working. It's turned itself on now. Cool. No, that's our service still. Don't do not do that. Okay, rather nice. Yeah, it's it's the posters. It's the same for the Class 700. It's just blank. Which just, you know, you're coming through and usually there's something colourful on them, some sort of ad to try and grab your attention, but it's, it's just blank. Maybe get the community to make some posters or... A bit like what Rivet Games did on West Cornwall Local when that first came out. Oh, and toilets. Although I don't think you'd want to see a toilet. The usual grubby, aren't they, on trains? Through we go. There's another train going. Let's see, they're frequent, aren't they? Right, let's um go to first. Where's first class? Had enough of stand the. Oh, got a route map. What's the route map look like? Oh, that's nice. So it's actually the real LNER map, like that. I don't like the weird made up ones. Where's first class? Is there even first class on this one? First class. So I've never been on an Azuma. I've seen them, but I've never been on them. Ah, there we go. This is, this is more like it. Ironing board plus. <laughs> Seats aren't much better. Uh, as in, as on standard. I mean, look, look at that. As opposed to what you used to get, like the HST of a massive leather sort of sofa almost. Now you just get like that. With a tiny bit more padding. Never travel first class. Oh, you got the kitchen as well. Look at that. Oh, I mean, that is... Wow. I didn't expect to be seeing that. You can actually go into the kitchen area. That's cool. I like that. We'll go through there. What we've got here. Another sort of little changing area. That's really cool. That. I like that. I suppose this is like the little crew here. Here's the crew area. And there's the cab in there. That's really cool, actually. I like that. Same you can't get these seats down. So that's where the people would be sitting. That's cool. Right, let's take a little look on the outside. We will eventually leave Grantham. I just thought we'd have a little look on the uh, on the outside, see what's going on. You've got the CIS displays, which are uh, working there. There you go. So it's like every half hour or so you get a train stop in here. Can we go inside here? We can't, but it's nice to see we can actually see the interior. Oh, there's a cat in there. Nice to see, yeah, that we can see the interior. Bottles fill, water refill point. So the station looks quite nice. And yeah, it's, you can see inside that I like that. Why is it making... Hopefully you can't hear those annoying noises. Just my um, controller. The lift, can you go in? No, but again, we did, we did start seeing that, didn't we? We did start seeing where you could use... Um, Use the uh, lifts, but that seems to have sort of gone now. But then it's not really worth it, is it really? Do we really need lifts? No. 
Sort of vending machines. What have they got in there? Dove. <laughs> like it? Uh, I want to say one of those dioramas. So they've got new dioramas where there'd be people like sitting like a, a cafe or something. Might not be any here though. Here at Grantham. Newspapers. Got a ramp there as well. Okay, well let's let's head back. In fact, let's just teleport back to the train. There you go, back in the cab, get the door shut. I want to see if that signal bell makes any noise. Doesn't, there's no hotkey for it either. No, there's no hotkey for it, it doesn't make any noise. Uh, right, Donny next, Doncaster. Uh, let's set that off. Not the brightest, not the easiest to see. Right, and let's get going. So we've got, I, I don't know how far that is, probably what, 30, 40 miles to Doncaster. So we shall, uh, we shall be off. There we go. Uh, cancel that. Can we go, go back to what we were on before? Home. There we go. We're off. We are out of here. What does everyone think about the route choice as well for the East Coast Main Line? As I mean, yeah, there was a, I mean, when I mean a lot, that there was a lot of conversation about this particular part of the East Coast Main Line. As I mean, this is, you've sort of seen, there's not much going on. Um, I mean, I think there's five stations, uh, and there's not, the timetable is quite slim. I mean, I suppose yeah, there's just not much going on. Um, you know, train wise and variety wise, as opposed to say something like the East Coast Main Line South. Um, but yeah, what does everyone think? What does everyone think about the choice of the East Coast Main Line, which has been picks? Do you like it? I suppose if you're a local, you'll be over the moon. <laughs> But it, it, it is nice to see this bit because this bit on train some classic. I know it's got the ATS leads and stuff, but sort of on the Steam store at least, it's just the ATS. No, it's the East Coast Mainline Modern, which is like a really old, pretty not so good looking part of the East Coast Mainline. So it's nice to have sort of a revamped, you know, TSW version uh, of it. That's well, 115 at the moment. Nice and speedy. Another tunnel coming up. Almost at 115. And we get there's a tree hanging out the tunnel there. Cool. Put that down. I do like the HUD. The HUD's cool. I do like the new HUD. A volumetric fog, that's another thing. But we'll show that off probably maybe on the Austrian route. Sort of fog in the mountains. That'll look quite cool. Oh, and also, actually, let's do it now, actually. You've got photo mode. Uh, photo mode, let's go in that. Oh, we're in a tree at the moment. Photo mode, let's try and get a nice screenshot. So, not because the sun's not bloody on it, because the tree's here. <laughs> need to get the sun on it. Let's see what we got. Rays, lower, hide overlay, depth of field. Uh, focal point. Let's just have a little whack with the settings. Not a good rotation. Got that. Exposure. This is all the fancy stuff. Saturation is probably the one which will make it look the most different. Look at that. Makes it probably look sort of vibrant. Got the uh, vignette as well, which is nice. Brightness. So lots of different things you can do there. Well, if I take a screenshot, what does it do? Okay, well, it takes a screenshot, but then can I then have it on the Xbox? Oh, that gives me a trophy for it. Train spot, and there we go. We'll try and get a nice shot a bit further down. I want to see the Flying Scotsman. Where's the Flying Scotsman? Oh, it was a double set there. Where are you, Flying Scotsman? Maybe there's no rail tours at this time. I mean, it is 7.50. Well, it's 8 o'clock in the morning. Might be an early tour.
Nice. Probably you can probably fill the speed as well, which is good. Blind, is there a blind? There is a blind. Write that down if you want. But yeah, as we head north. Hopefully it won't be long and I'll be doing it like that. No HUD. That, that's the best way to play. At some point. Oh, and also a thing about the points. Points have now changed. Um, they've changed quite a bit, actually. So it's more about how you drive now. Whereas before it was basically just if you got to a station on time you got max amount of points. If you if you if you sped anywhere along the route doesn't matter. Just get to the station on time you get the max amount of points. Whereas now it's more about how you drive. So if you drive with the safety systems on, which I forgot to turn on the DSD again or vigilance, I mean, where is it? It's on here somewhere. Where's the vigilance gone? If I do shift enter, there we go. Uh, yeah, if you drop the safety systems on, you get more points. If you put full brakes on, you're probably going to lose points. Because it's not going to be comfortable for the passenger. So it really sort of judges you on how you drive, which is good. Um, and yeah, if you have all of the safety systems on, all the fancy stuff, you, get, you can get a platinum medal. Which I think would encourage more people to put on safety systems. Because I know a lot of people like getting those medals. For me, I personally couldn't care less whether I got a... Uh, I suppose that second was red for a second. That went green. That's a bit worrying. Um, yeah, I couldn't care less whether I got platinum, bronze, silver. For me, the game is just about driving trains. Driving trains, learning the routes hardless. Um, and yeah, but it, it's, for me, it's just driving the train. I don't care about points and stuff like that. I just want to drive the train. I want it to be nice and realistic. That's the yeah that that's that's TSW for me. I know a lot of people like having points and like challenging their friends to get more points and stuff like that, which is fair enough. Let's have a look at the route map. We haven't had a look at the route map yet, so we're there. So we're I'm basically not even halfway yet. But we're running fast all the way. Probably get there in about twenty five minutes as we have the little walk about at um, Grantham. And yeah, level crossing barriers, they should all be working, so all the usual stuff. And it wouldn't let us go above 125. Oh, we got like a warning. Oh, that's because, yeah. So I've heard from a um, Great Western IET driver who might be watching that when you try and go above 125, the train gets unhappy. So it sort of it stops you going above 125. But then LNER might be a little bit different with their um, Azuma. So we try and get a screenshot. Let's try and get a nice screenshot now. Now that we've got that sun out. Not like in a foresty area. Oh, that actually looks nice. I know that's exactly the setup. Matching the man. Oh, there we go. Another, another trophy. Oh, that actually is quite nice. <laughs> I actually quite like that. That's uh, that's quite a bit of saturation. Let's put it up. Yeah, put that up a little bit. Right, I want to try and, try and take a screenshot. So don't keep putting trophies up. Um, good of you. Let's go in a little bit. Try and get a thumbnail worthy shot. Might be nothing fancy, but let's try and get a nice one. I'm gonna go for that. Jim. Yeah, let's go for that. Should we get another one there? Let's get another one from that angle as well. There you go. Maybe one. Yeah, no, that would do. Happy with that. That saturation thing comes in really nicely. Double yellow, let's start popping that down. So will, it, will we see it? You can actually get points taken away from you. Will we see it taking away points? Because we did have a little bit of harsh break in there. Oh, we've got a green thing. We might, we're following something. Okay. Another thing, another really important thing, which uh, I've seen a lot, well, not a lot, but on old train similar routes, they had it, 
I don't reckon they have it on here, do they? Mm, I haven't seen it yet. Is another just a railway thing, which to me is quite important. Is limited clearance signs. Limited clearance signs, no refuge point signs. Um, on a lot of the older train somewhere routes, which is weird, on, on East Coastway, it's got limited clearance signs, which, as, as a railway enthusiast, they're just things which make it that bit more realistic. Um, I haven't seen any so far. At least I haven't really been paying attention, but I don't think I've seen any so far. Which the limited clearance signs are the white and red signs, which you get on like bridges and tunnels, um, which just means don't go there when a train's approaching, because there's limited clearance. Um, and then you've got the no refuge one, which is the blue and white sign. Um, that's yeah, there's none. That's just telling you that there's no positions of safety. Uh, which a position of safety? Oh, there's another station here. Don't know what that one is, but through we go. Yeah, a position of safety is well, it's in the name. It's a a a, a, um, a, a safe position away from the trains. Um, so yeah, that's basically what it is. So when you have a no refuge sign, oh, the, oh, that was Newark. That was Newark Northgate there because you had the flat crossing. Um, why are we speeding? Oh my god, we are speeding. When was it 100 miles an hour? We are going 120. Might pay attention there. It's alright. Ellen and the R aren't watching, they don't know. So they're the sort of speed limits we'll have to learn. I didn't even see that pop up. Um, you really have to keep an eye out. Uh, and yeah, the no refuge ones is, uh, is it don't go there. Uh, there's no positions of safety on that side. But if you cross over the line, there'll probably be positions of safety on the other side. So for tunnels, you might see that. You would see limited clearance signs uh, and possibly a no refuge sign as well. But I haven't seen them. East Coastway has them. Which is, you know, almost well four, four years old. So 100 miles an hour through Newark. Is that for the flat crossing maybe? Maybe you have to slow down for that. So sort of just in case. And you can see AI going across the flat crossing as well. If you own the Midland Mainline route. Because you'll get the 158s doing the uh, Lincoln services. But yeah, it's nice to have this bit in the game. It's sort of a racetrack all the way up to. Um... Yeah, well, why have we found we keep getting double yellows? What's this all about? Start popping that down. So, was it being Grantham, Newark? There's not many on here. And I think it's Retford. Yeah, Retford, and then that's Peterborough. No, uh, Doncaster, Peterborough, Grantham, uh, Newark, Retford, and then Doncaster. I think that's it. Are we actually following something? Or is that the signalling just being funny? Are we actually? I mean, I'm interested to see if we're actually following something. We're not. So why on earth is it bringing us down then? weird. No, no idea. Hmm, okay. Some sort of substation there. I don't know, some sort of substation. Still 125 miles an hour. Which we're, yeah, going in at about 110. We speed it up a little bit. That was nice as we went um, under that bridge today. Sort of got that sound change as we went under. Yeah, so far, 
it's been quite fun. I mean, I'm going to admit it's not the most exciting of routes. Um, because well, there's not really much. We're just sort of 125 the whole way. A, a bit like a Castle Versberg, except as it's UK, you're actually doing something. So, yeah, it's not the most exciting. But it is still quite exciting. If you get what I mean? I don't know if that really makes sense. It's exciting, but then it's not actually that exciting. It's exciting-ish. I got double yellow again. And now green. So I'm not really too sure what's going on with the signal. What's the what's the signal doing? <laughs> He's trying to play games with us. Scenery looks good though. Yeah, nothing wrong with the scenery. The scenery looks well, as it should. So scenery looks fun. But now, now, now I've noticed it. It's it's bugging me now. And just the fact they were on old routes is yeah, just kind of limited clearance, limited clearance, and no refuge. Well, actually, I don't think no refuge were, but limited clearance definitely were. So someone who works on the railway and being a railway enthusiast, it's just it adds adds to it. It doesn't have to be realistic. I mean, it would literally just put um, basically every tunnel on bridge just put limited clearance signs, unless somehow this route doesn't in real life have limited clearance signs, which is probably highly unlikely. As they're everywhere. <laughs> so now that they would be on here. But yeah, you can definitely tell the uh, render distance has been improved. Um, and the wires have been improved. They're big things which you can quite visibly see have been improved. As on TSW3, TSW2. When you looked at the overhead wires... First off, you could see the poles loading in really close to you, which is much further now. The wires, I suppose, yeah, you I mean, you wouldn't really see them that well anyway. Um, but they look much more, it feel, actually feels like you've got wires above you now. Whereas before they were really just sort of hard to see and just not really great looking. But now you can actually visibly see them really well and they're, they're there. It's a really weird thing to say, but yeah. Right, is this Retford we're coming up to? Some sort of town we're going through. Must be something along here. No station? Maybe no station. Seems like a fairly big place we were going. No, there's got to be a station through here. We've got a 115 coming up. So we'll start popping that down. That might be. It's got to be there's some sort of town we're going through. I'm well, coming down to the 115. Is that a warning board? It is. That makes Hudless a lot easier when you see a warning board. So that's a really... I mean, that was 125 miles an hour all the way from Newark. Where you had the 100. So that was quick, that bit. And also the FPS. It's a bit flickery. Which is quite surprising for a route like this. Which is... You know, there's not really much going on. So I don't know what sort of go. I mean, this is Xbox Series X. So this is sort of. I mean, it is the the most powerful next gen console. So it shouldn't really be having any sort of flickers or stutters. Okay, one fifteen and up to one twenty. So if you yeah you can see yeah top right you can see the uh, little bar. It tells you the speed limits and stuff. You can still turn on the markers like this, like that, but I don't know having them on. 19 miles. That's good to know, though. I've got a 120. It sort of goes red, doesn't it, as you approach it? Which I suppose is quite handy because then you might notice it more. What about 100 limit for us? Um, <laughs> let's not talk about that for Newark. We'll get that up. So I know this will be premiering if you have. It really is busy. Look at that. Or busy ish. 
If you, if you, oh, massive solar farm. I'm getting distracted. Massive solar farm there. Uh, if you have just joined us, uh, this is Train Sim World 4. This is my first ever run on Train Sim World 4. Um, and this is the East Coast Main Line. And I'll quickly go over what you get again. So, for the standard, standard edition, uh, you get the East Coast Main Line, the Peter to Doncaster, the Vorarlberg, which is an Austrian route, and you get the Antelope Valley Line, uh, which is the American route. And then if you've got the Deluxe Edition, you then get Navica Dresden. Uh, this must be Redford we're going through. Oh, we didn't actually go for any platform. Uh, yeah, you get uh, Navica Dresden with the Vectron, and you also get the Flying Scotsman as well for the East Coast Main Line. And if you already own Navica Dresden from previous Trains and Worlds, you'll get it on Trains and World 4, but you won't get the Vectron. The Vectron is sort of its own new thing. Got two hundred. That was a neutral section. Or was that just coming on? So no, I don't know if they actually do work, but I, 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 I saw one there. So I sort of expect the neutral sections to be functional, as they were on Edinburgh Glasgow. And I think also on the Vorarlberg neutral sections work. So I would imagine they work on here as well. So if they didn't, that would be a bit inconsistent. Oh, let's pop that down. Just a tiny bit. There we go. That was interesting. I don't know if anybody noticed that house there. But it seemed to grow as we got closer to it quite literally grow but in terms of bugs I mean yeah we haven't had any game breaking bugs and it's been fairly alright so far I don't know why we're getting double yet and it just goes up to green um, that's a bit weird. Uh, it's been not actually following anything. Um, but yeah, it's been it's been all right. Obviously, I know with any any game, any release, of, you're going to expect bugs. But there's been nothing breaking. You know, where literally we can't complete a service. We haven't had that. Got about four minutes to Donny, although that's if we had left Grantham on time, which we didn't. So that's probably still ten minutes or so. How far is it now? Eleven miles. Nice signal box there. Oh, and you can also turn on the colours for the signals as well on the sort of diagram up top right. So it will tell you what colour the signal is. You can turn that on, I've turned it off, because, you know, they're quite straightforward UK signals. Probably some of the easiest signals to, to or some of the easiest signal you can come across. That's why I'm looking forward to getting onto the Austrian route, because that has, like, German-ish signals. Just they look a little bit different. So that would be cool to see. Somewhere along here as well, you've got the um, the Mallard. Uh, we've probably actually already passed it, but there's a little plaque which comm uh, commemorates the Mallard, which is the fastest steam train in the world. Um, yeah, there's a little plaque, and it says, like, Mallard reached the thingy here. Um, that's somewhere along here, but I think we've already passed that already. I think that's when it's um, a quad quad uh, quad track. Why does the scenery feel so much better here? 
Like the foliage just looks so much. What? How? Just kind of around that corner there, seeing so all the grass and reeds, and uh, it just looks much better on this stretch, as opposed to what we've seen full full journey. Why? It don't. Why are the frames coming down that much? I don't. How is that happening? Oh, neutral section. There we go. Although saying that, I didn't see the line like go out or basically anything happen there, so that's not not great. What was that? That was just a, some sort of reservation barrier. Back up to 125. Oh, now it's gone back to sort of this. How weird is that? It was like a really nice bit of like, you know, where you saw the grass quite close to the track and now it's just gone back to that. Oh, no, that's nice here now. That's just patches. Yeah, I, I don't know why it's stuttering. I'm, I'm not happy with that. Because yeah, th this is Xbox Series X, the most powerful next-gen console. But for some reason it seems to be struggling with a route where there's not really much going on. I mean, you would expect this, say, on the Brighton Main Line. But for this, I mean, look, you can see it's really, you know, 60, 40, 30. It doesn't know what it's doing. That needs to be sorted. I mean, if a route like this is like that, imagine what another one's going to be as a DLC. That Blackpool one, if that comes out and that's all stuttery and not nice, that's... I don't know. There's another Azuma coming down. There we go. A bit of a crossing. It's been a nice journey, though. That's for sure. How far are we now from Donny? Let's quickly put on that marker. Oh, literally out at, at, at the doors, at the front door of Donny. Well, maybe that's maybe it's, yeah, it might be because it's loading in. Maybe it might be loading in um, Doncaster. That's why we had those low frames there. Maybe. Could be right. It seems to be okay now. It probably, probably was actually. It probably was just loading in Doncaster. So it seems to be okay now. I wonder where that line goes up there. That's it. Another one already. Although I don't mean you can drive all of them. I think all of the some of them are literally non stop from Doncaster all the way to King's Cross. So you can't drive all of the services. You can drive, you know, most of them, just not some, not all of them. I think you've got the depot here as well at Doncaster, which I don't know what side that's on. Couple of sixty six there sixty sixes there. Look like the RHTT ones. Uh, container wagons as well, that's nice to see. I suppose that means you don't need Great Western Express for to see them. And does it come up on the track diagram about the station? I know the bar the bar will start coming down, but that really wasn't good for when we were coming into Grantham at about ninety. Well, I guess it's coming up soon because we've got a single yellow there, so I'm assuming maybe it will be round this corner. Unless the signal's going to jump up. But I think we're probably coming into it now. Unless, yeah, we are actually going to come to a stop. Not sure if TPWS does work on here, but I'm going to slow that right down just in case it does because, yeah, we don't want to get stopped. CPWS Hertz.
So that's coming down. I bet we're green, won't it? It's quite cool, this uh, coming in here. Oh, there's a red light. Hmm. I wonder if it'd be a, an SG job. Contact the signaller. Now we can't be early because uh, we're three minutes late unless we've lost our slot, which we may might may have. Unless it's some sort of approach control, which could be why. It is. That's what it is. It's approach control. Always nice to see. Always a bit confusing at first. It's like, uh, yeah, that's what it is. Approach control to stop you flying through at a hundred miles an hour. I didn't like that. We went, we went past the signal and you could hear it clicking. And quite loudly clicking back to red. Too noisy. But here we are. This is Doncaster. We'll, we'll get out and we'll have a little look to see um, uh, what's here, basically. And we'll, then we'll also have a look at what scenarios there are for the East Coast Main Line. Um, and also the amount of services as well. So I'll have a look at both of them. Is that... The stop marker, that's not stop marker, is it? That's what coach we're in, or what coach there is. So we right to the end. Oh, there you go, four to five. That's for us. Well, that was a really nice journey. I mean, obviously, yeah, a little bit of stutters every now and again, which I don't really know why. Um, but, yeah, that wasn't that bad of a journey. do that right let's get out and have a look i'm gonna have to do that it's not going off this time good oh it is ice though hang on we it said it was normal oh we'll get it off anyway because i um, have vigilance go away there we go look at that the azuma what's that up there french fence that was a shopping center oh someone's got the uh go ahead on the through line Oh, that's all oh, that. Oh, hello. Oh, we got platinum for it. There you go, our first platinum medal. That's cool to see. You've actually got a breakdown of what you've done wrong now and actually where you've been speeding as well. Oh, damn it. On stream, it's going to be really easy to see where I've been speeding. Oh, what's that? Get your first platinum trophy. I got two gold medals. Wait, what? Oh, that says different. On my computer, it says two gold medals, and there it says one. I oh, know I've got three apparently now. That might be because of all the because the uh, profile transfer. Well, that wasn't too bad. Hard impact, left vehicle. Yeah, okay, not too bad. Used safety systems. Apparently, it says not applicable. Uh, not applicable there. Um, okay, and we drove yeah almost 80 miles. So that's quite nice. Return to free roam. Well, let's see. Um, so this one's this one's going now. They're they're gonna keep coming through. They are. There's a route map. So this is uh, Doncaster. Oh, that's nice. Can, can we take it? Can we take it? Oh, we can't take it. That's nice to see, because that was... Well, we thought that was going to be on... Oh, you can't get... Oh, my God, you've just got on. Uh, yeah, that was, I think, going to be on the Brighton main line. Uh, but it never happened. Oh, it's off. Stop giving me trophies. Why do, why do you get a trophy for every gold medal you get? Oh, you can't get... No, but why are you going? Why is it doing that? I'm surprised that hasn't been... Uh... Oh, hello. Yes, there it goes. Oh, we got a 66 going through. Cut that out. I don't really know how that's got priority over the Azuma. You've got your tail lights on as well. Oh, there goes that. Uh, what are we going to do? Oh, yeah. Can we go in here? You can. Oh, that's good. I like that. That's really good. It's just, yeah, it's adding these spaces, which would usually be all sort of great. You wouldn't be able to see through the windows. They're all sort of blurred off. But adding them just is is nice. And you've got the diorama here. People with their, you know, briefcase there having a coffee. It just adds to it. It's really, really nice. Um... And yeah, pause, pause there if you want to see some funny dovetail games all nighter. 
Uh, some funny ones on there. What else we got? Pop Bear, French Broad Chocolate, it's H2O, the Danny Special. Um, yeah, that's cool. All those chocolate coins, they're always nice. Yeah, these are really nice to see because they really make the world just more lively. Having the weight and them open, it really, I really like those things. Um, so yeah, good job Dovetail for adding those things. It just adds to it. It's nice. Go through here as well. This looks, uh, looks nice. How far can we go though? Oh, where are we going to? Ah, oh, going to there. Let's uh, come up here. It just feels like a really sort of lived in and lively, you know, people, uh, baggage there, you know, someone had their suitcase over there, I mean, their, um, briefcase. It just adds to, uh, sort of how real it feels, which I really like, really do like. There you go, more sort of people lining up for the cafe there. Oh, there's even a platform here as well, I didn't realise there was one here. Yeah, it, ju it just adds something like going in the waiting room as well. It just makes it feel more lively which I really like um, but yes uh, let's go and see what there is to do on the route, well actually no, we might as well just quit and then do it on their main menu let's see what you can do uh, so uh, we have got uh, journey mode, what have we got on journey mode steamy affair and quick and the shed um Choose a route, East Coast Mainline, so nine scenarios, re-record, Winter Wonderland, the Fact Controller, Raising the Shed, Hot Seat, Testing the Limits, Job Center, Limping Off, and In Frozen. That's spelt wrong. Um, uh, oh, I like the music. The music's cool. 260 services. So 58 in the uh, Azuma, 21 in the Shed, and 16 in the Scotsman. Um, so that's good. So you've got sort of a nice array there of what you can do. So I think the two, the dash two, that's the longer one, I think. No, not that one. Yeah, that one. Yeah, it's got a nice mix there of what you can do. And they're not all full services as well. Some are just a little, you know, 27 minutes from Peterborough to Newark Northgate. Um, so that's that's good. Uh, what else for Trains in World 2? I know there's other bits as well. The music's really good. The music's really good. Training center, start journey, fundamentals, sort of yeah, all the things we saw on TSW3. Um, that music is good. I like it. Uh, crates, here we go. So you've got livery designer scenario plan. Scenario plan is now a lot different. If we just, uh, I don't know, why why? Uh, start time, you know, goes up in five minutes now. You can add a description, edit the weather as well, which we just didn't have before. So you can do that. Yeah, confirm that. Uh, yeah, YY. Why, why? <laughs> why, why? Uh, passenger, freight, passenger. Set train, I oh know, 801. Uh, right, yeah, that one there. Add path. So I oh know, Doncaster aggregate side in to Peterborough Platform 1. Uh, and add another path. Go from there. Yeah, go to there. So you can add different paths now as well, which are cool. I'm going to turn that down a little bit. hope that's not too noisy. So yeah, you can do pathing now on the Scenario Planner, which is nice. In Livery Designer, you can have up to 1,000 layers. Um, that's, yeah, up to 1,000 layers now. So this is a lot more you can do, uh, which is, is really quite nice. Uh, but that's going to be it from me. That's a nice livery on the Crates Club. Yeah, that's going to be it from me. Uh, that was my first look of Trenton World 4, the East Coast Main Line. I'm probably going to go and do the Austrian route now. Um, but yeah, hopefully everyone's enjoyed it. Big thanks to Dovetail Games for giving us a key to show it off and honour as usual. Links can be found in the usual places, Discord, PayPal, Merch Store. Apart from that, thanks for coming in and hopefully we'll see you in the next one. See you all. Take care. Bye, guys.